Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the tutorial on evaluating determinants of matrices. Today, you will be able to evaluate a 2x2 two two matrix, uh, excuse me, a 2x2 two two determinant and a 3x3 three three determinant. So let's flip to the next page. Here we go. This should look like your notes. Put a little star up here and start the lesson. So when we're talking about a determinant, we're talking about the value of a square matrix. The value of a square matrix. So that means that only square matrices will have a determinant. So if we're looking at the this square matrix right here, it's a 2 by 2. The determinant of that actually looks like this. It has a different symbol. It doesn't have the brackets. Rather, it has uh, straight lines. They kind of look like absolute value bars, but they're not absolute value bars. So that's what a determinant looks like. This is a 2 by 2 determinant. We have a property of evaluating a 2 by 2 determinant. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the product of this primary diagonal, principal diagonal, and subtract from it the product of this diagonal. I call it a little fish, because it kind of looks like a little fish, like that. So we'll, I'll, I say fish it, but that's basically just um, evaluating this determinant. So this will be equal to the product of A times D subtracting the product of B times C. So this diagonal minus this diagonal. Not very difficult math. Let's go ahead and look at one. Actually, let's look at this one up here. So we've got this 2 by 2 determinant here. If we wanted to fish it, or rather find the determinant, we would say 3 times 4 minus 1 times 2. Right? 3 times 4 is this diagonal, minus 1 times 2, which is this diagonal. So that is 12 minus 2, and that is 10. So the determinant here for this 2 by 2 is 10. That's the value of this square matrix. If we wanted to look at two other ones, just to keep going here, we can look at this one. This diagonal minus this diagonal. If you want to draw a little fish in there, that's great. That would be 4 times negative 5 minus 2 times negative 3. Watch out for this subtract, subtraction, especially if you're talking about a negative product. This is negative 20 plus 6, because a negative times another negative, of course, makes a positive. So that's negative 14. This determinant, and I know that it's a determinant because I see the little determinant bars, we multiply this product and we subtract this product. So this is going to be equal to 5 times 6 minus 15 times 2. That is 30 minus 30, and that is 0. So we've seen a determinant that's equal to 0. We've seen a determinant that's equal to a negative, And the first one we did was a determinant that's equal to a positive. So that's how you do a 2 by 2. That's pretty simple. When we get into a 3 by 3 determinant, it gets a little bit more involved, because obviously there's more um, elements. Okay? The first thing we need to do is we need to decide which row we want to use or which column. So we actually have a bunch of different choices here, and it really doesn't matter which one we pick. I'm going to pick the, the top row. I'm going to put a little circle around the top row, and I'm going to use those um, elements. This is a method called expansion by minors. Expansion by minors. Okay, so I'm going to use these three elements as my scalars in my expansion. Now, the next thing I need to do, once you've decided on which row or which column to use, we need to assign our pluses and minuses. Okay. Um, the pl they, they alternate through the determinant, and they always start with the plus in the top left uh, corner. So we're going to put a plus here, and then we're just going to alternate. Plus, minus, 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 plus, 
minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus. It doesn't matter which order you go as long as you alternate and start with a plus sign in the top left, you're going to get the correct um, pluses and minuses. Okay. This does not magically change the value of any of these elements. Okay. It does not. That's why I'm putting them up here and not on the left side. I don't want you to get confused and think that this negative is now going to make this element a negative. That's not the case. What it does is it change it, it it tells you which um, sign to use for these scalars. So since I'm using these three scalars, I picked that originally. I know that I'm taking the positive of this scalar, the opposite of this uh, as a scalar, and the positive of this scalar. So let's go ahead and expand. This is going to be equal to my first scalar is whatever element a sub 1 is. I know that it's just going to be whatever this term is because there's a positive sign here. This is going to be multiplied to a 2 by 2 determinant. And how we find that 2 by 2 determinant is we have to block out the row that this scalar is in and the column that this scalar is in. If we do that, block out this column and this row, we'll be left with four elements, and those are the elements of our, of our determinant. I'm going to undo so it's not all squiggly in there, but that's how we get the B2, the B3, the C2, and the C3. Again, we blocked out the row of my scalar and the column of my scalar to yield these four elements. Okay. Next, we go to the next scalar. And I know that this one is going to be the opposite of whatever this number is. So that's why I'm going to say the opposite of a sub 2. And that's also going to be multiplied by a 2 by 2 determinant. And we find that 2 by 2 by blocking out the row that a sub 2 is in and the column that a sub 2 is in. You can see that there are four elements remaining and you put those four elements in the 2 by 2 determinant. So that's going to be B1 and B3 right there and there and C1 and C3. We move on to our final scalar. We've done a sub 1, we've done a sub 2, now we're on a sub 3 and I know that we're keeping the same sign because of the plus sign. So plus a sub 3 that's also going to be multiplied by a little minor, a 2 by 2 determinant, and that is found by blocking out the row that a sub 3 is in and the column that a sub 3 is in, mentally blocking these out. I wouldn't necessarily use your pencil and block these out because then you're missing all of the numbers. But you can see that these four elements will be remaining. Let me undo, 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 and we're talking about B1, B2, C1, and C2. Once we have this expansion by minors, then we evaluate this 2 by 2 determinant by the method that we did up here, and this 2 by 2 determinant, and this 2 by 2 determinant, and we'll ultimately have um, you know, a bunch of products that we combine together by addition and subtraction, and we get our final number. So this is the algorithm that you could use for expansion by minors, and that is, of course, dependent on picking this first row. I know that it might be confusing right now with all of these letters, so let's go ahead and try an example that has a bunch of numbers. Now, here we are with a 3 by 3 determinant, and I get to pick whichever row I want and whichever, whichever column I want. Well, my eyes instantly see this 0, so I would like to use this 0, because 0 times anything is just 0, so it's going to kind of minimize my work. So I could pick this middle row, or I could pick this final column. And I think that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick this final column. So I'm going to circle it to identify that. Okay. Now I need to assign my pluses and minuses. Again, you always start in the top. Uh, excuse me, the top left. This will be a plus, and then I alternate plus, minus, and then plus, minus, plus. That's really only the only ones that I need right there. I don't need the other ones to confuse anything. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. That takes me there. So I know that since this is a plus, when I use this as a scalar, it's going to keep the same sign, because plus means it'll keep the same sign, and that will be multiplied by a little 2 by 2 minor. If I block that out and block that out, I can see the 1, 1, 2, and negative 3, and that will be the, um, the 2 by 2 
determinant, 1, 1, 2, and negative 3. I'm going to change color here and move on to the next, which is actually just a 0. I don't care if I'm subtracting 0 or adding 0. Ultimately, I don't need to worry about that because 0 times anything else is just going to be 0. That's why I like to pick the one with a 0 in it. So now I'm going to move on to my third one, which is this 5. I know that I'm keeping the same sign, so that's why I'm going to put positive 5. And I'm going to multiply it by its 2 by 2 determinant, which I get by blocking those numbers out and getting the 4, the 2, the 1, and the 1. 4, 2, 1, and 1. So that's the original step. Again, I like that I had the 0 here, so it saves me some time. Now I'm going to figure out what this is. I'm going to evaluate this determinant by the little fish method. Negative 1 times, what do we have here? This is negative 3 minus, um, let's see, I think I'm get confusing myself here. Uh, okay, negative 3 is this product minus this product, which is 1 times 2, so that's that. I don't have to worry about this 0 anymore, so I'm just going to skip over to the plus 5. And let's see, evaluating this one, I've got 4 times 1 minus 2 times 1. So now let's see what I've got. I've got negative 1 times negative 5 plus 5 times 2. So this is positive 5 plus 10, which is 15. And that is the value of this determinant, 15. I'd like to do this same problem. If you got that, that's great. You can skip on. But I'd like to do the same exact problem, uh, but choosing a different uh, row or column. So I'm going to flip over. This is going to be the same exact same exact uh, 3 by 3 determinant. If you've got it not, gotten it already, that's great. You can move on. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. This time, I'm going to pick this middle row. Again, I like the one with the 0 because it's going to be a little bit less work. I'm going to assign my plus, minus, and plus. So there's my plus always in the top left. And then I alternate minus, plus, minus. That's really the only three that I need. So let's go ahead and expand. Because this scalar is now going to be the opposite of what it is, it's not a 1. It's now the opposite of that. And then I'm going to multiply by its 2 by 2 determinant. And I get that by blocking out this row and blocking out this column, which would leave the 2, the negative 1, the negative 3, and the 5. 2, negative 1, negative 3, and 5. Moving on to the next one, I'm just going across this row. I'll pick this one. I know that I'm keeping the same sign this time, so plus 1 times its 2 by 2 determinant. And that's found by blocking out the middle row and the middle column. So I'm, leave, I'm left with a 4, a negative 1, a 2, and a 5. 4, negative 1, 2, and 5. Luckily, I picked this uh, row that has the 0, so I'm not going to have to worry about anything else. So I can get into this 2 um, by 2 determinant. So 2 times 5 minus negative 1 times negative 3 plus 1 times, let's see what we have here. We've got 4 times 5 is 20 minus negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So I'm subtracting a negative 2, which is actually ultimately plus. So what do we have? Negative 1 times 7 plus 1 times 22. And guess what that adds up to? 15. Of course, we're going to get 15 because we already did that in the previous one. I just wanted to show you that it doesn't matter which row or which column you use. You're always going to come down to the same correct answer. So now you've seen it twice. I'm going to give you a try problem here. It's a little bit different. Now this one has a variable in it, but it's basically the same method. You're going to do expansion by minors on this, and you know that the final answer will equal to 1. So you'll be able to set up an equation. Why don't you pause the video right now, pause the video now, and try this try problem, and then uh, see if you got the correct answer. Pause now. Okay, so hopefully you had a good attempt on that. I chose to use the bottom row because it had a zero in it, 
and I assigned my plus minus pluses. So I went and did this expansion. Again, the zero didn't yield any work there, so that's great. Um, I did my expansion by minors here, and I expanded. I know that there's a variable in there, so I wasn't able to combine these products and just had an x. I ultimately know that it's equal to 1. That's what it said here. So I had a little equation here. I got all my like terms together, and I solved for x, and I got that x equals 4. Hopefully you got the same thing. If not, go ahead and follow through my work, and um, that's great. That's the end of this tutorial. Hope you had a great time.